I actually ended up needing to divide this video up into two parts. So this first part is going to be all the information about toners, what a toner is, how to use one, what ingredients are found in toners, how to preserve toners, all the information about toners. And then my next video, we will actually be formulating four different toners. And I'm not quite sure when that video will be up, but I will have it linked in the description box as soon as I post it. And if you turn on my post notifications, you will be notified when that video gets uploaded. So hope you guys enjoy this one. Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to my formulating for beginners series where I share with you guys everything I know about formulating skincare products. If you're new here, my name's Tara. I have an Etsy shop where I sell skincare products and my YouTube channel's all about formulating skincare products, inspiring you guys, and just sharing everything I know about owning a business and running an Etsy shop. Also, if you guys do enjoy this video, then make sure you give it a thumbs up, make sure you subscribe, and make sure you leave a comment so I know you guys enjoyed it. So let me apologize in advance for my camera not being in focus, sorry about that. Also, my formulating for beginner videos are a lot more information heavy compared to my other regular videos. Do keep in mind that you are able to fast forward throughout this video. I created an index with different chapters so you can skip to the chapters you want to learn about out because there is a lot of information I'm going to discuss about toners here. If you are a beginner or you're like new to my channel, I definitely recommend going back and watching all the videos in this series so you can understand everything I'm talking about in this video because you might not understand how to actually write a formula and I don't teach how to do that in this video, but I've taught how to write a formula and how to figure out how much of each ingredient to use in my past videos for this series. So what's a toner? I actually took this definition directly from Wikipedia and it said, a toner, a lotion, tonic or wash designed to cleanse the skin and shrink the appearance of pores, usually used on the face. It also moisturizes, protects and refreshes the skin. Toners can be applied on the skin in different ways. A cotton round, this is the most frequently used method, spraying onto the face by applying a tonic gauze facial mask. A piece of gauze is covered with toner and then left on the face for a few minutes. And obviously you can use just the gauze like they mentioned, but these sheet masks, they're compressed sheet masks. And when you add liquid to them, they, you know, swell up and turn into masks. These would be a good option for that. So how to, or like when to use toners. So you wanna use a toner after cleansing, but before your moisturizer or serum. And if you're using a serum that's hyaluronic acid based, I actually recommend applying the toner first before the serum, of course. But instead of waiting for your toner to dry, I would go ahead and add the serum on your skin while it's still damp because the water on your skin gives more moisture for that hyaluronic acid to pull from and it will be less likely to leave this like tacky feeling on your skin that hyaluronic acid can tend to do for some people. So that's the best way that I recommend using a toner if you're following with a hyaluronic acid serum. Now, if you're using a different type of serum without hyaluronic acid or you're using a moisturizer, I would go ahead and wait for your toner to dry and then follow with the next product. Also, toners can be used morning and night. Obviously, it will depend on what ingredients are in the toner because there are specific ingredients that are commonly used in toners but are recommended to be used at night. And when you apply a toner on your skin with a cotton round, you wanna make sure you saturate your skin with the product. So make sure it doesn't feel dry. So toners can also help remove any excess dirt or makeup after cleansing. You can always find a reason to incorporate a toner into your skincare routine. Toners are also beneficial because they can help incorporate specific like active ingredients into your skincare routine that you might not have in the other products you're using. And also they can help minimize the appearance of pores. Now it is important to keep in mind that you cannot reduce the size of your pores. I actually watched a video here on YouTube about pores and it actually really helped make me more visualize and understand the way pores worked. So I'll link that video down below and they definitely go into detail about why you can't actually shrink your pores, but you can help minimize the appearance of pores. And yeah, when you get older, your pores do get bigger. So that's the importance of sunscreen. I should also mention another benefit of toners, which I see this specifically highlighted with essences, is they 
help restore your skin after cleansing. So cleansers contain surfactants, which can disrupt your skin. And this is when your skin's in its most vulnerable state. So proceeding with a toner after cleansing can help replenish your skin and prep it to better absorb the ingredients following your skincare routine. And I really find this highlighted when it comes to essences. So the different types of toners. So before I actually go into the way that I like to categorize the different types of toners, I do want to explain to you what I found on Wikipedia since I took my definition of toner from Wikipedia. But um, here on Wikipedia, they explain there being four different types of toners, skin bracers or fresheners. And they mention these being the most mildest form of toners. They contain a humectants. And if any, maybe like a little bit of alcohol, which that just like blew my mind because it's like, I feel like this is outdated because dermatologists do not recommend using alcohol in toners. And then the next category of toners is skin tonics. And this is described as containing a small quantity of alcohol up to 20% and then humectants and they're suitable for like normal combination or oily skin. Again, what's with the alcohol? And then there's acid toners, which I, I agree, this one's right. This is totally a category of toners. Uh, BHAs, beta hydroxy acids, and AHAs, alpha hydroxy acids. So that makes sense in my mind too. And the last category is astringents, which this makes sense. Um, these are the strongest form of toners and they contain a high portion of alcohol, 20 to 60%. And there are antiseptic ingredients, water and humectant ingredients inside the astringents. And these can be irritating and damaging to the skin and they help remove excess uh, protective lipids as well as denature proteins in the skin. These can be irritating and damaging to the skin and they're actually not recommended. But uh, the categories that I am going to be discussing of different types of toners are like my way of categorizing toners. And I split them up into three categories. We have hydrators, active toners, and then we have acid toners. So acid toners, that's the only one we have in common <laughs> with the Wikipedia article. Let's talk about hydrators. I'd say these are the most basic toners. These are like your mists as well. So like a rose water mist. These are the easiest to make and they include very minimal ingredients. They're typically for dry, sensitive, or like normal skin types, but they can be used on really any skin type looking just for some, you know, hydration, which is great for all skin types, even oily skin. But those with oily skin may not feel the need for these types of toners as there are better options out there for oily skin, specifically the acid toners. So the next category I have created are active toners. So these are basically the same as hydrating toners, but they include actives like niacinamide, ceramide complex, alpha arbutin, or any other kind of like expensive ingredients formulated, I'd say for like specific skincare concerns or skin types. So the hydrator toners are the best example for that is like a rose water mist. The active toners will have like ingredients in it targeting specific concerns. So somebody who would want to brighten their skin, get rid of dark spots, you could have Arbortin in it, some licorice extract, or a toner for oily skin would have maybe like some willow bark extract, some henna extract, definitely some aloe vera, maybe some witch hazel extract, or some witch hazel. Now that I mentioned witch hazel, this is a very, very common ingredient in toners. I wouldn't say it's necessary to be inside toners, but most toners, oh, not all of them, but a lot of toners do have witch hazel. And there is a common misconception when it comes to witch hazel. A lot of people think that witch hazel contains alcohol, but that's actually not true. It's just the common witch hazel that we buy from like Walmart, Target, whatever does have alcohol in it. But you can find witch hazel from ingredient suppliers that are alcohol free. And this type of witch hazel is amazing for every single skin type. And it's definitely the witch hazel that I recommend you getting. Now I do feel like the active toners and the hydrators kind of like overlap a little bit because you will find like a lot of like basic toners maybe with some like niacinamide in it. Like that is like a really, really common ingredient in toners. There are even more toners than the, these three types. Like you can have like milky toners or essences. I don't know, we'll talk more about this later. Acid toners. 
So these are formulated with alpha hydroxy acids and beta hydroxy acids. And I won't be talking about these types of toners in this video because AHAs and BHAs are pretty advanced ingredients to formulate with. I do actually have a lot of videos, not a lot, but like a good handful of videos with AHA toners and BHA toners, and I will link those down below. So if you guys do wanna make them, you can learn about them. But I would say that these would need their own whole separate video because they're pretty advanced ingredients to work with. Moving on, toners versus mists versus essences versus astringents. Astringents had their moment first, at least for me personally, I could be wrong. Astringents can help cleanse skin, tighten pores, and dry out oil. It's crazy to see how much skincare has changed since I've been a teen. Astringents were like all that back when I was a teenager, but now they kind of have a bad reputation. I spoke about this earlier, but it's for good reasons. Astringents are alcohol-based and they're pretty drying for the skin. The reason astringents were so popular when I was a teenager is because we all had oily freaking skin. We all got pimples from our oily skin. So in our head, we're like, yeah, let's use this astringent. It's alcohol-based. It dries out my skin. It feels so non-greasy after, and I love it. But in reality, that wasn't good for our skin. What it does is it causes your skin to feel dry and dried out, thus making your skin think it's dry and creates more oil. And then the oil gets clogged in your sebaceous glands, which cause pimples. So that is why it's not best to dry out your skin. So I would just completely rule out astringents. We're not gonna be talking about them. I'm not gonna teach you guys how to make them. Just forget that they exist. Now, toners, mists, and essences. When I first wrote this script, I actually said they're all basically the same. But after doing research on essences, I have found that they're very, very different from toners. And we'll talk about that here in a second. But let's talk about toners. Like what separates a toner from a mist? I would say not really much at all. It's mainly just the packaging that would separate the two. And toners are more likely to have active ingredients like beta hydroxy acids, alpha hydroxy acids, because those aren't something that you would like want to mist into your eyes accidentally. So they're more likely going to be in a toner rather than a mist. But essentially toners and mists are the same thing. So essences are like the newest addition to the toner family. Essences got popular due to Kate Beauty and are uniquely Korean. And I thought I understood essences, but as I was doing research for this video, I found that there was a lot more to essences than I thought. So I actually kind of want to do a whole separate video on essences. Make sure you thumbs up this video, subscribe, leave a comment, let me know if you want to see a video on essences, because I, I really want to do one now. So ingredients found in toners, here we go, water. This is the base for all toners, and it will be the highest percentage of your formula. If you prefer, you could use a hydrosol essence water, which, yeah, I know that sounds confusing. I was just talking about essences. What the heck is an essence water? I'll talk about those here in a minute. Yeah, so if you wanna use like an essence water, hydrosol water, whatever, instead of actual distilled water, you totally can. The next common ingredient would be witch hazel, specifically alcohol-free witch hazel, like I mentioned earlier. And it can help soothe the skin, help with redness, help with razor burn, inflammation, and it acts as a non-drying astringent to help cleanse the skin and tighten pores. The next thing we can use are hydrosols, which I kind of already mentioned. So these also go by the name hydrolates. It's an aromic water that is left over from the distillation of an essential oil. In the past, hydrolates were considered the more valuable product, a rule which today goes to essential oils. However, hydrolates are making a comeback and are growing in popularity with aromatherapists. You might also hear the term hydrosol used interchangeably with hydrolates, particularly in the United States. Essential oils and hydrosols of the same plant may not smell the same though. There are synthetic hydrosols and real hydrosols. So as I mentioned in the quote earlier, hydrosols are made 
basically while essential oils are being made. So while an essential oil is being made, there is like a distillation of like water vapor from the plant happening and they collect that water and that's the hydrosol. According to this website here, this is their quote, what many people are not aware of is it has been common practice since 1950 to manufacture products sold as floral waters by adding pure essential oils or synthetic perfumes to water by means of alcohol or some other unwanted solvent in order to manufacture them quickly and at a lower cost. The availability of true hydrosols is restricted to a number of harvests a crop can produce which is typically only once a year, although there are exceptions. This regularly causes a shortage of supply until the next year's crop is distilled. This scarcity plus the cost of transporting hydrosols in bulk around the world explains why manufacturing them artificially is much more convenient and profitable to the industry that use them. In case you were unaware, a large portion of the cost of hydrosols is due to the cost of shipping them from distilleries around the world to a whole range of manufacturers and suppliers outside of our industry. So you can usually tell if a hydrosol is synthetic by looking at how it's worded in a listing. Normally if it's synthetic, it'll be listed as like floral water. So it'll say like rose water instead of rose hydrosol. But a lot of places will have like rose hydrosol and then like rose water, floral water or something like that in quotes because a lot of people use the word interchangeably. I have even done that. I'm actually trying to not do that anymore. It's a bad habit of mine because there really is a difference between rose water and rose hydrosol. I always type rose water, I think, on all of my blogs I've written. So a lot of suppliers, even if they are selling a true rose hydrosol, they still will put rose water in the listing because that's what a lot of people know it as is rose water. A lot of people don't realize that there's a difference between the two. So they have to put that for kind of like SEO purposes. You know, another good way to tell if it's real or not is the price. If the price is too good to be true and it's like cheaper than everywhere else, it's probably synthetic and not real. So there definitely are many, many different types of hydrosols and I'm not going to go into detail on all of them, but I'll list a few that I've used and what their benefits are. Rose hydrosol is great for dry and mature skin types. It gives your product a lovely rose scent and is a great ingredient for soothing the skin. Lemon hydrosol is best suited for oily skin and makes a wonderful addition to body care products geared towards skin clarity. Lavender water is great for balancing dry or oily skin types. It serves as a lovely fragrance in products and is a great ingredient to help soothe the skin. Chamomile hydrosol is one of the most gentle anti-inflammatories of all the hydrosols and it's well known for its healing, soothing effect on the skin. Turmeric hydrosol offers the gorgeous aroma of turmeric and is said to help with relieving bruising, swelling, and related pain. Then cucumber hydrosol can be used in soothing and cooling skincare applications and offers a very nice refreshing scent of cucumber. There are so many different types of hydrosols out there like sweet grass, orange, lime, frankincense, calendula, rose geranium, many, many out there. All right, now we're gonna talk about essences. These are different from the Korean essences I mentioned before. These are fruit essences and they're more similar to hydrosols. They also go by the name hydrosols or distillate. You'll see them listed as that too. According to this website here, fruit essences are fruit flavors obtained during the concentration process of fruit juice and during the separation process of aromatic compounds from various fruits. I've worked with strawberry essence, blueberry, and green apple essence. They all smell so freaking good. Definitely don't smell like a synthetic scent. These have more of like a natural type of scent. So I have noticed that these are becoming harder and harder for me specifically to find. Uh, like Lotion Crafter used to sell a whole bunch of different essences. And now they only carry green apple essence. But there are a few places I still have found where to purchase them. I'll be sure to link them down below. Next ingredient, these are essential humectants. Glycerin, propendiol, hyaluronic acid, propylene glycol, butylene glycol, sorbitol, sodium PCA, panthenol. They help hydrate the skin and help the skin retain its moisture. So they're crucial. Then we have some aloe vera. This can come in the form of aloe vera liquid, 
aloe vera powder. I've seen 100 times aloe vera powder and 200 times aloe vera powder, which is the kind that I typically use. I prefer the powder over the liquid because it takes up less space, it's cheaper to ship, and it's concentrated. So you only need like a tiny bit of it into your in your product, and yeah, you got like a whole bunch of aloe vera liquid. Extracts. Extracts are a fun and easy way to add all kinds of unique benefits to your toners. It's also a great way to help like market and brand your products. Like adding like strawberry extract would make your product be like a strawberry themed toner. There are so many different extracts out there. I definitely can't go into detail about all of them, but I'll name a few that I notice I use pretty often. So we have willow bark extract, calendula extract, licorice extract, strawberry extract, chamomile extract, and cucumber extract. Next ingredients, hydrolyzed proteins. There are a lot of different hydrolyzed proteins. There's like rice, quinoa, wheat, and these each kind of like have their own unique benefits, but overall they're all very conditioning to the skin. They're cationic, which if you guys remember learning about surfactants in a past formulating for beginners video, cationic are conditioning ingredients. C and the C, cationic conditioning, that's how I remember. So these are going to be great for anyone wanting like a conditioning effect in their toner. Next category, vitamins. This is a very broad category. I would say niacinamide and DL panthenol are really the most beginner friendly common like vitamins that I recommend you formulating with. I mentioned panthenol earlier in the humectant category because it is a humectant, but it's also vitamin B5. And niacinamide is a vitamin B3. Niacinamide is a very effective skin restoring ingredient. It offers multiple benefits for aging skin. It can help improve the appearance of enlarged pores, uneven skin tone, fine lines, dullness, and helps improve the overall appearance of skin. So that is the reason niacinamide is so commonly used, not only in toners, but like a broad range of different skincare products. So there are other vitamins like vitamin C or maybe vitamin E or vitamin A, which is retinol. I would say these would make the product a little bit more advanced. So to keep things short, vitamin C, vitamin A, retinol, those are both very easily destabilized ingredients that need to be formulated specifically. Thickeners. So thickeners help give toners a bit of viscosity. There can be some watery toners, very thin toners, medium thicky toners, and then super thick toners, you know, whatever you wanna do. And the benefits of adding a little bit of viscosity to a toner, there's a couple benefits. The first one I would say is the fact that it just won't absorb into a cotton round as quickly. You can just pour it onto a cotton round and it'll kind of like settle on top of the cotton round instead of soaking in. So you're kind of wasting less product. Having a thicker toner could also allow you to just kind of like put it on your hand and like rub together and like pat into your skin. That's really big with essences. Also, you might want to thicken your toner to sort of give it more of like a better sensory feel. So those with like really dry skin might favor a thicker toner because it actually feels like their skin is like hitting something out of it as opposed to a watery toner which would be absorbed almost like instantly into the skin. A thickened toner would definitely stay on your skin longer and take a little bit longer to absorb and some people would probably favor that feeling over one that absorbs quickly. And then the last category I just made other water soluble ingredients. Um, this list could be never ending but essentially if it's water soluble and doesn't really have a lot of like formulating regulations, you could probably use it in a toner. So you just wanna gravitate towards water soluble ingredients and just you know read about their formulating guidelines and make sure they don't need like some kind of solvent or something. This last section is about preserving toners. So I do have a video all about preservatives in this formulating for beginners series. So you should have already watched that. So this next section should be a lot easier to understand. We've already established that toners are a water-based product. So that means we need a water-soluble preservative, something like Liquid Dermal Plus. So the reason I recommend Liquid Dermal Plus is because it's definitely the easiest preservative to use because it works in so many different formulas, easily mixed into water with no issue at all. It's stable through a broad range of pH levels, pretty inexpensive, and most suppliers sell it 
And that's basically why I recommend it for beginners. It's just easily used in a range of different products. People are always asking me like, Tara, what's a preservative I can use in like all my products? Liquid Dermal Plus is probably your best option. I mean, it can't be used in everything, but most likely it'll probably be able to be used in like 80% of the stuff you make. And also I know not everybody is able to source Liquid Dermal Plus. People want to use more natural or eco cert ingredients. So there are other options. Uxil K903 and GeoGuard ECT are both EcoCert approved preservatives. So the issue with these two preservatives and also Optifin Plus and Uxil PE9010, all of these are water soluble, right? Like they're all described as being water soluble, but they still have issues mixing into watery solutions. So if you add like Uxil K903 into water, it'll just separate to the top, but it's water soluble. So why the heck is it doing that? If you mix it with like glycerin, propendiol, propylene glycol first, it will mix into your watery solution totally fine. So that is about it for today's video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Leave them down below. I'll do my best to reply. If not, maybe someone else will reply and help you out. So I'll talk to you guys next time. Later. I'm